In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to tackle things that scare you on the bike. Now, this is entirely personal. To some people, it will be a slight descent. To others, it's something absolutely terrifying. This leads deep and scary. So it doesn't matter what standard you are on the bike. In this video, I'm going to chat about exactly how you can ride things that intimidate you, how to build your skills up in the bike, and how to just push through to that next level. So I hope you really enjoy the video. If you want to follow more MTB Fitness videos, please make sure you subscribe. And let's dive into it. So first of all, let's talk about what scary actually means. Now, I think the first thing to count to be aware of with this is that it's entirely up to you what you want to ride, what you don't want to ride, how far you see yourself going. I'm sure the vast majority of people watching this video can say, I'm never going to do Red Bull Rampage, <laughs> myself very much included. Like, that is so far out from what I want to do. But then on the other side of the scale, I want to be doing more than blue XC style trails. Now what you need to decide is where on that scale do you want to be? For me personally, I always want to push my ride into that next level. I always want to get to that next bit, do that bigger drop, learn to jump, do that extra bit. But what you've got to figure out is where you're at. And then that's how you decide, right, here's what I want to be able to do. So don't feel any pressure to do things that scare you. I was just talking to Ben, my videographer, and he said that he feels no shame when he's out riding with his mates. If they're hitting something that he doesn't want to hit, it's very much a risk reward. The reward of hitting something that scares you is that, yes, I've done it. You fill yourself with pride. You feel that you progressed on the bike. The risk is broken bones, concussions, time in hospital. You know, Oh, we've all been in hospital many times myself included with my broken wrist and my rolled ankles like that's very much on the risk side of it so what you've got to do is just weigh up how important it is to you to do something but to start this video i just want to say don't feel any pressure now let's get into a little bit of a checklist to decide whether you should actually be sending a scary feature or not so how do you know whether you should be riding something or not? So you've decided whether you actually want to be able to ride something or not, whether it's that risk reward and whether you want to do it or not. But how do you know whether you are capable of doing something? And this all, I think this all comes down to personal, I suppose, self-awareness of your ability as a rider. So if you're going to do something steep like this, for example, so it's probably hard to see on camera, but you've got this steep chute that you're coming at the, from the top, and then the bit in the middle, this rocky bit in the middle, is like, it's steep. There's no way you can break on it. You've just got to ride through it. Now, I remember when I came here two or three years ago, that absolutely terrified me, and it took me a good half an hour, 40 minutes, to build up the confidence to actually ride it. Now, you can just ride through it easily because my confidence has improved. Now, to know whether you can ride something like that or whatever, this is easy to some people, it's incredibly difficult to others, you've got to look at what you've done in the past. So this is a steep shoot. When I came to ride it, I knew I'd ridden other steep things that were similar to this. So I can say, right, I'm feeling a bit nervous about doing it, I'm feeling slightly scared, but if I look through at my past experiences, I can think of this, 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 this steep shoot that I've done that is similar to this and that is no different. And then when you know that, you think, right, it's just a bit of nerves, nerves are normal, I've got the ability to do it. If you're looking at it and suddenly you're doing a super steep shoot and the only thing you've ever ridden before is a blue cross-country style, style trail, then think, right, you know what, maybe this is a little bit beyond me for now, I think I should build this up a little bit and I should do gradually more difficult trails. So what you want with your riding is you want a bit of a natural progression where you go from riding things that you're totally comfortable with and you gradually get more more difficult on the trail and gradually tackle bigger and bigger features that's how you know whether you're ready or not you should look at something and think i'm nervous about, about doing this but i know that i can do it if you look at it and you're thinking i've no idea whether i can do this or not it's terrifying me i'd say you're out you either fully commit to something or you don't do it So step one when it comes to riding a difficult, technical, scary feature is to stop and actually get off your bike and have a look. So the worst thing you can do, unless you've got somebody with you who knows the trail, is to just send it because what you don't want to do is turn that corner and find it steeper than you think, there's a sharp turn that you weren't expecting, there's a big drop in there. So to get off your bike and walk it and then have a look at it. So when you're heading and you're having a look at the trail, you want to take a look and actually look out for some specific things. So you're looking at what's it like under foot is it slippy is it grippy is it rock is it wet you just iron it up and sort of thinking about how much traction there is because that makes a big difference then you want to look at right which are the bits that are completely 
unbreakable. So this little bit here, you're rolling that, you are not breaking down it. You've just got to be off the brakes and fully commit to it. So you're looking at the bits. Then you're looking at the run out, right, at the bottom. What is there at the bottom? Can I slam on the brakes at the bottom? Is there a tight corner? In this, it's a pretty smooth run out of it. There's a bit of a step up at the top if you want to do, or you can just stop, so that's fine. But you're just taking it all in and really eyeing it up. You're figuring out where you can brake, where you can't brake. You're figuring out where you need to be looking. You're looking at where your wheel needs to go. In some places, there might be one clear line, and then it's really sketchy on either side, so you're deciding where my front wheel needs to go. So all you're doing is you're just doing a really good recce of it. And when you look at it, that gives you so much more intel. It gives you so much better idea of where you want to ride when you actually hit it. So step number two, and this is totally optional, is dependent on who you're riding with if you're on your own, is to follow someone into it that's done it before. So if you can follow somebody into that sketchy section, that scary section, and they've done it loads of times before, you can match their speed, you can match where they're braking, you can just follow them down, that makes it a whole ton easier. We obviously don't always have that option though. You might be riding on your own or you might be riding in a group who've never hit a feature before. So step number two is ideal. If you can, follow someone into it. But if you don't have that option, don't worry. You've already done step one. You've had a look at it and you've decided, yeah, I can ride this. You've seen what you're gonna do. And you've done that kind of pre-step, if you like, which is actually deciding whether you're up to it or not, whether you've got the skills, whether you've got the capability. If you've decided, yeah, I've got the skills and the capability, but I'm a bit nervous and you've also decided yep yeah, you know what I've looked at it it looks perfectly doable then it's time to move on to step three if you've not got anyone with you which is just riding it so step number three if you've not got somebody with you to kind of follow in and to do the descent with then it's time to send it now what I will stress with this is make sure that you've got your phone with good signal you're not in the middle of a mountain in the middle of nowhere in a thunderstorm you want to make sure that it's safe to do it something like this i'm here at leeds urban bike park every five minutes there's somebody coming around so if this was a feature that i was scared of doing i know that there's people around i know that i've got my phone with me but what i would say is if this is way beyond your comfort zone make sure you do it with somebody around you you want people there ready to look after you with all that being said step three when you've nailed all that you either need to fully commit to sending it or you need to not ride it so when you ride it you're going for it you're not doing some scared braking you're not backing off and getting right over the back. You're fully committing to riding it. You're riding it with confidence and you're sending it. So like you can see with me riding this feature, there's no dilly-dallying. I'm looking where I'm going. I'm fully committing and I'm sending the trail. Even though you may be a little bit nervous, you may be a bit scared, you don't show that in your body language. It's almost like you're scaring up to an angry dog. They always say dogs can sense your fear. Well, the, the trail can sense your fear as well. You want to ride it with confidence, even if you're not feeling that confidence. And that's how you tackle it and you nail that scary feature. Now, step number four, once you've nailed it, I highly advise doing it again once or twice. <laughs> If you just do it once, you'll wonder whether it was a fluke, whether you can actually ride it comfortably or not. If you go and do it two, three, four times, one after another, and you do it comfortably, then you're proving it to yourself that yes, you can do it. Now, what I will stress with this is please make sure that you're sensible when you decide what you can or can't ride, and just make sure, even though you don't want to obsess over it, have a think of what if. So if there are some what ifs in there of what if you injure yourself, what are your plan Bs? Is there somebody around who can help you? Have you got your phone on you? Is it mega dangerous and you want to only do it with somebody around you? Just make sure you decide those things and be sensible because what you don't want to do is knock yourself out in the middle of nowhere. That would be dreadful. Don't do that. So I hope you've really, really enjoyed this video. I hope it's given you a little bit of insight and just tells us how to build up what you can do on the bike, how to tackle scary features, and I hope you really enjoy it. If you did, please leave a comment and hit like on this video. And if you want to watch some more MTB Fitness videos, click up there and you can watch them now. Thank you very much.